Hey guys, this little lecture is going to be about hydrostatic stability. So hydrostatic stability is this idea that if you have some object floating like this egg here, and I displace this egg, will it return to its initial floating position? Will it be stable? Or will it continue to move on its own uh, in the direction in which I displaced it? So in order to talk about this, let's talk about some nomenclature. Here's this object, this egg. It has a center of gravity, and its weight, W, acts about the center of gravity, in this case, denoted by G. Here's the buoyancy force, which is the weight of the displaced fluid, Fb, and it acts about its center of pressure, or the center of buoyancy, B, denoted in this figure. Now, the buoyancy force also acts along a, a vertical line until it hits the free surface, and that line is called the uh, line of action. Right? And which is, in this case, happens to be lined up to the line of symmetry of the egg. Now if I displace this little egg uh, an amount delta theta, you can see that the buoyancy force shifts over to the left. And its new line of action intersects the old line of action at this point M, the metacenter. The long and the short of it is, this uh, floating object will be stable if M, the metacenter, is uh, above the center of gravity. You can kind of see this, and then if you imagine this, these two vectors acting as a moment, what's the, what's the uh, resultant moment of the gravity and the buoyancy force? It appears to me that the resultant moment would be counterclockwise, right? I'm just kind of guessing that based on the way it looks. So this resulting moment would be counterclockwise, and it would tend to right this egg back into its initial position. However, if I displace this egg a lot, uh, much larger than before, so delta theta is much larger, the buoyancy force is moving about, and you can see that it has actually moved such the metacenter, the intersection of the original line of action, this guy here, with the current line of action, this guy here. So the metacenter is there. It's below the, the, the gravitational uh, center of gravity, so it's unstable. But it also appears that if you just look at those two vectors, it looks like it would continue to rotate this egg, right? The center of buoyancy is moved on the other side of the center of gravity. So the result is, is that it will continue to rotate in the direction delta theta that I displaced it. So this results in an overturning moment. So that's physically what causes it to be stable or unstable. All right, let's talk about this just a bit more. So the stability criteria is going to be defined by us determining what these lengths are. What's the distance MB, the metacenter to the buoyancy, uh, and what's the distance MG, the metacenter to gravity, and what's the distance GB, gravity to buoyancy. So those should be equal, right? In the undisplaced situation, MG plus GB, the distance from here to here plus here to there, should equal the total distance MB. Now, in this case, B is the original uh, 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 center of pressure, not B prime, which is the displaced. Now, MB, this total length, it just works out according to the geometry, is the moment of inertia divided by the submerged volume. All right, so our stability criteria is this. If the metacenter height, MG, is positive, the body is stable to small disturbances. In other words, you can look at this graph and, and convince that convince yourself that this statement is basically saying that if this distance, mb, is larger than gb, that means m is above g, it'll be stable. The other thing, the other way it can be stable is that if uh, gb is negative, in other words, if the uh, buoyancy force is above the center of gravity, so if the center of pressure is above the center of gravity, that's also a stabilizing uh, effect, and I'll show you an example of that in a minute. So here's an example. If uh, I had this sphere and I put a weight in it, by putting the weight in it, I'm pulling the center of gravity down. Now the center of buoyancy is going to be right in the center of the sphere, right? Because it's, it, the center of buoyancy is located at the center of the displaced volume. So if it's at the center of the sphere and the CG is below it, then this meets criteria too. The CG is below the center of pressure, the CP, therefore it's stable. And you can convince yourself, right, if this were a bobber or something underwater and you had this, this little uh, mass in the bobber, it would obviously be very stable. 
right? Because the CP is always above the CG. All right, what about this? I'd like you to look at this picture and pause the video and then tell me if you think this is a stable or unstable situation. Go. Did you pause the video? All right. Well, I'm looking at this and I'm seeing that the displaced center of pressure, CB, looks like it would, if I drew the straight line up, the uh, line of action, it would intersect the original line of action above the center of gravity. So there's the meta center. It's far above the center of gravity. So it would exert a, a restoring moment. So this would be a, uh, a stable situation. Let's do another example. Let's consider this iceberg here. And um, let's ask the question, is the iceberg stable or unstable? And let's replace the iceberg with maybe uh, a cone, right? A cone that has a circular cross section. So the height of the cone, uh, sorry, the radius divided by the height, so the radius is this r right there, uh, is 4. So that gives you some idea of the geometry. Is this cone stable? All right, so what we need to do is calculate the distance uh, m, m, uh, b and calculate the distance gb. And if mb is larger than gb, then we'll know that the, that the system is stable. So in order to locate these geometries, the first thing we need to do is maybe do a force balance to give us uh, all of the uh, geometric uh, locations that we need. In other words, how much is this thing even floating above the surface? And then that would tell us where the center of buoyancy is. So I've, I'm going to put some nomenclature here. The total height, little h, is the height of the cylinder. The amount that it's poking up out of the surface is going to be z. And then uh, this is like a conic section. When I section this cone, the little radius uh, of that little cone will be little r. All right. So for this to be in equilibrium, basically the uh, fluid displaced is going to be the buoyancy force. So that's the submerged volume times the density of the fluid is the uh, buoyancy force counteracted with the weight of the cone itself acting down. So that's the density of the cone times the total volume. So if I write that out, the, uh, if you didn't know it, a cone that's been sectioned is called a frustum. So the volume of this frustum is here. And then the cone volume is this pi r squared h by 3. So this gives me the geometry that I need, along with kind of a, um, a recognition that the little cone has to be symmetric to the big cone. So this is like a similar triangle sort of recognition, that z over h must be proportional to little r over big R. All right, so using those two relationships, I can solve simultaneously and get this expression that z over h is equal to 0.154. That says that, given this geometry, that it's sticking out about 21.54%. So that's not a very good drawing on my part. But uh, so that's how much of the iceberg is, is the tip of the iceberg. All right. So using this, we can now calculate where the meta center is using this expression that it's the, uh, the area moment of inertia divided by the, the submerged volume. So this is the area moment of inertia for a circle, pi r cubed over 4 by the uh, submerged volume. And so that's the expression for the submerged volume for this frustrum. And uh, plugging it all in, uh, using the relationships that I got on the previous page, it simplifies to 0.99 pi r squared h. And so I get this expression, r squared h. But I'd, I'd rather write it in terms of just h. So I can insert this geometry here that was given to give us just h. All right, so the meta center height above the center of buoyancy is 0.00. 87 times h. If this height mb is greater than the height gb, then I know uh, I've got a stable cone. So in order to find gb, it's just a little geometry. I'm going to find the center of the gravity for the cone and the center of gravity for the frustrum. And the difference will be the difference between the center of buoyancy and the center of gravity. This guy right here is basically the center of gravity and the frustrum is the center of buoyancy. So the height uh, relative to the base is uh, h by 4. And so that's 0.25 h, obviously. 
Now the center of the frustrum here, this would be where the center of pressure is, because that's the submerged volume. You look this up on the internet, you get this expression here, and you plug in all the numbers that we know, uh, basically the relationships, and you get uh, this 0.441. You can see if z goes to zero here, and little r goes to zero, that everything cancels and you just get left with this h by four. So it does resolve back to its initial center of mass for the cone. Anyway, the difference in those two is 0 0.0059, and you compare that to what we found for the distance MB, 0 0.0087, you can see that MB is in fact longer than GB, so that puts the metacenter above the center of gravity, and the system is stable. So ideally, uh, what you would really like is to have the CG be below the CP all the time, and you'd be in that bobber situation I showed you earlier, and you would always be stable. I'm not sure that cat is very stable, but I like that picture, so. All right, try some problems, and I'll see you in the next lecture.